Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and if you are new then welcome to the channel. In this video I am going to discuss inverse discrete Fourier transform using decimation in time fast Fourier transform. So let's dive into the video. I have here took a sequence of length equal to 4. So actually this sequence is taken from the previous video and uh, this sequence was the result of the discrete Fourier transform of the given sequence which was in time domain and this is in frequency domain so here we will perform inverse discrete Fourier transform to convert it into time domain let's see whatever things are necessary for, to convert it into time domain so as we have saw in the previous video that the index value of the time domain samples are bit reversal that means the here the input will be x of k and the output will be x of n so these outputs will be bit reversal and the inputs will be normal so the index of the output will be bit reversal and the index of the input sequence will be normal I guess you know what is bit reversal just normally we reverse the equivalent of this like let's say this is uh, equivalent of 2 so if I reverse it I will get 1 so in this way we do the reversal bit so in this way we take the bit reversal index of the sequence so now I'm going to draw the butterfly diagram to perform the inverse discrete Fourier transform so here as it is inverse discrete Fourier transform in the previous video I took here one butterfly and here two butterflies so here as it is inverse we will take two butterflies over here and single butterflies over here so we will draw first the single butterflies so it represents one butterfly this is the second one and here we will take two butterflies the arrow goes like this so on the upper arrow we have one and on the lower arrows we have minus one again here on the upper arrow we have one on the lower arrow we have minus one and in the previous video as you saw I wrote W n power n k on the left hand side on the bottom left hand side but here as it is inverse we will write that on the bottom right hand side so this will be 4 0 and here this will be 4 minus 1 and this is minus 1 take care of it because it is inverse inverse discrete Fourier transform again on the lower right hand side we will take this and here w4 of 0 so this value is equal to j this value is 1 this is 1 this is 1 now you might wonder how I calculated this so this is equals to e to the power of minus j 2 pi by n and if I take this as 4 and here I take 1 then it will be equal to e to the power of minus j 2 pi by 4 into minus 1 so I'll get e to the power of minus j plus j pi by 2 so this value so this value is equals to j so that's why I took j here now what are the inputs and what are the outputs in the previous video we took this time domain here but as it is inverse we will take this time domain here so here we will take x of 0 then as it is bit reversal the next will be x of 2 the next will be x of 1 and the next will be x of 3 and here the input will be in normal indexes so now let's put the values and let's calculate the output first here this is 3 plus j this is minus 1 plus j this is 1 minus j and this is also 1 minus j now let's calculate the output on the first line so it comes like this the data flows here 3 plus j into 1 it will be 3 plus j and for the next it comes from here 1 minus j 
and here 1 minus j so we will get here 4 and for the second line the data flows from here minus 1 plus j into 1 minus 1 plus j and from here it will come 1 minus j plus 1 minus j so it will get cancelled and we will get 0 here for the third line the data flows from here that is 3 plus j and here the data flows from here 1 minus j into minus 1 so it will be minus 1 plus j so it will be 2j plus 2 and after multiplying with 2 also uh, at this point also the value will be same on the fourth line when we take the data flows from here minus 1 plus j and from here my 1 minus j into minus 1 so it will be minus 1 plus j this will be equal to minus 2 plus 2j and after multiplying with j we will multiply it over here we will get minus 2j plus 2j square it will be equal to minus 2j and minus 2 so this is equals to minus 2 of 1 plus j so at this point this is the value so let's note it down what are the outputs after the stage 1 the outputs are 4 0 2j plus 2 and minus 2j minus 2 so as we have done the calculation for the stage 1 now let's calculate the last outputs over here so from here for the first line if we take the data flows from here 4 into 1 it will be 4 and from here it comes 0 then it will be 4 plus 0 equal to 4 and the for the second line the data flows from here 4 and from here 0 after multiplying with 1 the answer will be 4 only and after that for the third line when we take the data flows from here 2j plus 2 into 1 2j plus 2 and for here we will take minus 2 minus 2j so it will be minus 2 minus 2j so this will be equal to 0 because everything will get cancelled for the fourth line when we take the data flows from here 2j plus 2 and the, the data flows from here and we will take the negative of it because there is minus 1 so we will get plus 2j plus 2 so it will be equal to 4j plus 4 and the addition in this diagram is that we have to take 1 by 4 on the last point this is inverse discrete Fourier transform so we have to divide the resultant with 4 so we got here is 4 and we will divide it by 4 and the output we got here is 4 so we will divide it by 4 the output we got here is 0 we will divide it by 4 the output that we got here is 4j plus 4 we will divide it by 4 so we will get 1 1 0 and this will be 1 plus j so let's write the original sequence the original sequence will be this is x of 0 is 1 x of 1 is 0 x of 2 is 1 and x of 3 is 1 plus j so this is the original sequence which is in time domain so as you can see in the previous video uh, in the previous video this was the result and uh, this was the input sequence so in, we took this as our input and we got this as the output so you see when I applied discrete Fourier transform on the original signal, I got this sequence. And again, if I applied inverse discrete Fourier transform on this sequence, I got the original sequence. So you can imagine how it works. So that's how it works. And I guess you have understood the concept. Let's see what are the major differences between the discrete Fourier transform and inverse discrete Fourier transform butterfly diagrams. So let's see the differences. Here on the discrete Fourier transform side, I have took single single butterflies on the left hand side and I have expanded it by taking two butterflies on the right hand side. And in the inverse discrete Fourier transform, I have took two butterflies on the left hand side and single butterflies on the right hand side. And so that is one difference which we took with the butterfly diagrams. Now let's see this W n power this. So this we took it on the 
left hand side on the bottom of this butterfly right this is on the left bottom of the butterfly here also this is on the left bottom of the butterfly here also the same thing but in inverse discrete fourier transform we took it on the right bottom of the butterfly here also on the right bottom of the butterfly here also on the right bottom of the butterfly and the same here so that is the second difference and the third difference is the inputs and the outputs the input is in time domain and the output is in frequency domain and in discrete fourier and in inverse discrete fourier transform the input is in frequency domain and the output is in time domain which is in bit reversal and the third difference is this by dividing every result by 1 by 4 so that are the four major differences between the discrete fourier transform butterfly diagram and inverse discrete fourier transform butterfly diagram so here as you can see the input is in bit reversal and the output is in normal order and in the same manner in inverse discrete fourier transform the input is in normal order and the output is in bit reversal so ye bas inke nakhre hain if you understand this thing then you are good to go the basic thing is it this is taking in bit reversal and it is giving in normal order and if we give it in normal order it will give us in bit reversal so that's it so that's it for this video i guess you have understood everything whatever i have explained in this video and also don't forget to check out the previous video and the next videos in this playlist you will find it useful and uh, yeah thanks for watching